Hello everyone. In this video of solid mechanics, we are going to talk about the Castigliano's method or theorem you might call. This is an energy-based method and energy we are talking about strain energy that I discussed in my previous video. We use it in solid mechanics to determine displacements and slopes in structures and uh, when they are subjected to load even if they are not we can use fictitious loads as you'll see and we can use them for statically indeterminate structures it's a very powerful method based on the strain energy now to give you a motivation let's look at the cantilever beam here subjected to a load at the end as you know the reactions of the support are p shear force upward and m equal pl uh, counterclockwise on this end and if I cut it at location x from the left side, v of x is going to be constant p, m of x is going to be pl minus px, correct? So this is my bending moment at any location. And if you remember, in bending, the strain energy of the uh, whole system can be coming from integral from 0 to uh, l of mx squared dx over 2ei where m of x is the bending moment so i'm going to plug this function here right as you can see and integrate it and this is the total strain energy i get for this beam now if somebody says how much the end point here is going to come down so if somebody says how much is this deflection here delta you know, if we look at my previous videos, we have to basically solve differential equations. Say this M is basically EI times nu double prime, and then integrate it, plug in boundary conditions, find the function, and then plug in L at the end. And if you remember, this was, if you watch my previous videos, this was PL cubed over 3EI. Okay, so we can solve that differential equation and find it. Now here with this method, I don't even need to go that far. All I need to do is to find the derivative of this strain energy with respect to the force P. Why force P? Because P is the force causing this deflection and it's right under P. So if I wanted deflection here, it would not give me derivative of U with respect to P would not give me that deflection because this is not right under P. But this delta is for the same point that the P is applied. So Castigliano showed that if I call this point A, the partial of potent, the strain energy with respect to the force P is going to be deflection at that point so if you take derivative from this that becomes a linear term and 2 at 6 simplifies to 3 and you get the exact same thing so you see easily i could find the deflection here at the end of the beam with a simple derivative without solving a second order ode if i had the strain energy which i could only get by an integration so this is a faster method and in general Castigliano has two theorems. The first theorem is what I just discussed with you. It says that the deflection under load PI can be found by taking derivative of the total strain energy of the system with respect to that PI. Okay, and uh, seems like I need to do some modification here because these are actually not uh, full derivatives, these are partial derivatives, okay? So we have to be careful about our notation. The same thing goes here. Now, not only you can use this for forces and uh, linear displacement, you can use it for moments and angular displacement, or as we call it, slopes, okay? So the slope due to some moment can also be found by taking the partial of the strain energy with respect to that particular moment. Okay, so here let's look at the first example. Here we have the cantilever beam again and at the end not only I have force P, I have also the concentrated couple M0. And I want to find not only, I want to find how much this point is going to go down. I want to find this delta. I also want to find the slope at the end. So if this slope at the end, this angle is theta, theta A, and this one is delta A, I want to find both of these in this case. 
So in this case, I need to again find m of x and plug it into the uh, strain energy formula to find it. So I need to find the reactions like last time. And clearly, if I have a P there, I should have a P up there. And I have a bending moment. Now, if you take some of the moment about B, this M here is going to be not only PL, but also plus M naught, correct? That is the bending moment uh, of the support reaction to cancel those two. Good. Now, if I go ahead and cut it at distance X and look at one side of it, so on this side, I have this PL plus M naught, and I have this P. And if I look at the shear force and the bending moment, clearly the shear force V has to be equal to negative P. And if the bending moment is this way, M, clearly M is going to be this one, and then minus p times x so it is going to be pl plus m naught minus p times x if you factor out p you are going to get this one so that is your bending moment and i plug it i integrate it and i'm going to get three terms here one is just because of p one is just because of m naught and one is the interaction between the two so that is my total basically strain energy in the system now if i want the deflection at point a all i need to do is to see what is the cause of this we know the cause of this is p and a is right below p so all i need is to take partial of u with respect to p and if you look there are two terms here that have that derivative the first one is the first term p squared which uh basically if you take derivative, this quadratic term becomes a linear term. The second term is also showing P in it. So this is a linear term. So the coefficient of that, this M naught L squared over 2EI, is going to be your uh, second term. Now, if I want the angle, the slope at the end, I have to take partial of U with respect to M naught because M naught is the cause of theta. So what I need is to take partial of the u with respect to m naught again there are two terms here that show that this is one this is two so this is the derivative of the first one with respect to m naught is a linear term there we go when this is a quadratic term so you get this there we go just found both of them without going and integrating this and then uh, finding the um, theta which is the v prime and then finding them at l and so on just very fast i could find it but to motivate you further we're going to look at um, some other cases because you might say well this is really great and so on but it is really limited to the case that you want to find the displacement or angle right under the load right so here i can find the displacement right under the load p by this formula what if i want the displacement at point c at C, there is no force, so what should I do? Can I take derivative with respect to something? The answer is yes. If a displacement of any point other than the point right under the load is required, then you're going to add a fictitious, an artificial load over there, okay? So you say, well, I assume there is some force here, call it Q or anything else. And I include that Q also into my strain energy calculations. Then I take partial of U with respect to that Q. That is going to be delta of point C. And when I calculate this, whatever it is, at the end, I plug in for Q0 because Q does not actually what exists. So at the end, whatever result I get, I plug in Q of zero for whatever Q term in it, because Q does not actually exist, and that should give me delta of C. Okay, so this is really great here, fictitious. So here, we're going to do the same thing for the same example here. We're going to do the same example, and as I said, we're going to find the deflection of point C, the midpoint. Okay? So how do we do that? As I said, you're going to plug in load Q over there, which is really an artificial load. So it should be equal to zero at the end, not right now. 
So here, M is going to be a little bit different, okay? You are going to get a different M. Now, the way that you see these calculations are done, you might say, where is Q? And the answer is, it is showing itself here for the strain energy in part, basically CB, not CA. Because if you cut here at CA, right, and you look at the right side of the um, uh, section, then you don't need Q, right? So this is your P, this is your M0, and here, whatever M that you get clearly does not depend on Q. But on this side, if you look at the right side, you will have it. And the X that you see here, this solution is coming directly from the book. The X, the way the X was done in the book, it was taken from this side, not from the left side. So don't be surprised. If you want to go and consider X from this side, it is fine. We're going to find different things, but clearly when you uh, calculate and simplify the two, the energy in the two sections and add them together. And the reason you are doing two sections is because your M has two different functions for the left side and the right. Because we are passing a concentrated load, your M changes when you pass from this load Q. So on one side of it is this, on the other side of it is that. If you integrate them and add them together, okay, you're going to get lots of terms. And if you simplify, this is your total simplified term. If you look at it, it is some huge thing. There is effect of P only. There is effect of P and M naught. There is effect of P and Q. M naught alone, Q alone, and then M naught and Q. Okay? So there are six terms here that you will have in general. Now, if I want displacement at point C, I take partial of this total energy with respect to the load at Q. So if you do Q, only the Q terms will appear, which is this guy, this one, and this one. You take derivatives of them. That's a linear term. This is a linear term again. This is a quadratic term, so you get a line. So this is your total uh, partial derivative with respect to Q. But as I said, at the end, since Q was not there, wherever you see Q in this formula, you're going to cross it out because it's zero, and then you only get the first two terms. So this is your deflection at point C as a result of P and M not because Q was not there in the first place. There we go. We found it. Okay. Beautiful, right? Clearly, if you wanted to do it with the M, you could do it, but this is a little bit faster as long as you do your integrations. Uh, because M, you have to find anyways. These M's, you have to find. Whether you go with the method of deflection I showed you with this, uh, basically, with this equation, whether you go with that or with this method, you have to find m of x anyways. So this method is easier. You just integrate them and then you take partial derivatives. Okay? Now, this so far was some motivation. Let me give you another motivation, which is the second theorem of Castigliano for finding the redundant forces in statically indeterminate systems. It says... Under the uh, statically, under the forces that are redundant, if here, let's look at this example here. This is a cantilever beam with an extra support at point B, right? Under port, under uh, B, you have RB. And this RB is a redundant force. I don't need it, but that redundant force does not allow this point to move up and down. So if I want to know how much this point goes up and down, the answer is zero, correct? So if I call this point point B, delta of point B should be equal to zero. But how much is it? That's the partial of U with respect to what? With respect to RB. In this case, RI is RB. So if I find U and take partial of that with respect to RB, that's displacement of B, that should be equal to zero. This is an extra equation that can help me find the reactions all in this system. Okay? Yes? So here we are going to 
use the second theorem of Castigliano, which is amazing for finding the extra equation for statically indeterminate systems. So what do we do here? Let's put the reactions on. So the reactions we have is RB here and then RA there and then some moments, right? Like this, MA. Now, clearly, if you write your equations, you see that RA plus RB equals P. And also, if you take some of the moments about A, you'll see that MA and then basically plus RB times L over 2 and minus P times L equals 0. Okay? And this force is exactly in the middle. So you see you have three unknowns, R, A, R, B, and M, A, and only two equations. So that's not enough to solve. You need an extra equation, which should come from here. So what you do is, again, like last time, you find the M function in both of the regions. So here is M in part one and part two. And again, here in this uh, solution that you see, if you look at it for between A and B, it found the M as R of A times X. And in region 2 is R of A times X minus R of B times X minus L over 2. Okay, and if you want, you can do it yourself. You can simplify. So we found the M's in this region and in this region. And then when we integrate both of them, and one from 0 to L over 2, one from L over 2 to L, and add them together, this is going to be your entire strain energy, which has RA in it, which has RB in it, and the product term, right? And you might say, where is that MA? Why the MA is not showing up? Because MA can be actually written in terms of the other terms here, right? Correct? Look at here your MA can be written in terms of the other terms, actually. So uh, you can replace it back in here, and that's why in these two, uh, MA does not show up. If you want, you can keep MA as an extra unknown, and then MA is going to show up as well here, right? So here, if I want to bring MA, then when I cut this, it is going to be... Uh, minus MA, the way it is shown here. And here is also going to show up as well. Okay, and then MA is going to be showing up here, but you're going to have extra terms. So what the, this problem did, this in the solution, MA is already replaced from this top one here. And simplified, so you got your entire U. Now, if you take partial of u with respect to rb and set it equal to zero, there are two terms that show up, this term and this term, and simplify, you find rb to be 3p over 8. Okay, so you see that one directly gives you a, an equation, correct? Because take partial derivative here, you're going to get one term here and one term there. This is going to be a linear term, this is going to be a constant term, divide and you'll get rb to be 3p over 8. So when RB is 3B over 8, 3P over 8, that means RA is 5P over 8. And MA is already replaced, but if you want, you can plug them back and you can see that it is basically, that is going to be 3 over 16, 1, so it's going to be um, 13 over 16. PL. Okay, so you can find all of the unknown reactions just by taking derivative and setting it to zero. So these are Castigliano's first and second theorem or Castigliano's method in general for finding deflections in solid mechanics using strain energy. Hopefully the video was useful to you and I'm going to see you in the next lecture. Thank you.